Hello, and welcome to the Understanding Substance Use Disorder course. My name is Margaret Olubi, and I will be your instructor. This is one of four courses in the Fundamentals of Christian Mental Health Coaching Certificate Program, offered at no cost. It can be taken 100% online or face-to-face -face in regions where we have regional trainers or coordinators. This course is not for licensed therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, or other credentialed providers. It is an introductory course for lay counselors, for mental health coaches, for life coaches, um, and for any individual genuinely interested in offering basic help and support to those struggling with drug and alcohol addiction in their local communities and faith assemblies. This course introduces the learner to the world of addiction. And by the end of the course, the learner will gain a foundational understanding of substance misuse and the addictive effects of these substances. With the guidance of the Holy Spirit and applying biblical tools and strategies, the learner will learn how to plan and deliver the best care possible to those struggling with substance use disorder in their church setting or in their community. And please note that the terms substance abuse, substance misuse, drug addiction, and substance use disorder all mean the same thing. And therefore I'll be using th those terms interchangeably in this course. Now as pastors, biblical counselors, ministry leaders, coaches, it's important to be familiar with substance misuse in order to know how to help those struggling with this disease using the proper tools and approach. Drug and alcohol addiction have become an extremely concerning problem today. It's a social problem that affects not just the individuals who misuse the substances, but their family members, loved ones, both in the church community and circular settings. Addiction does not discriminate. It cuts across all ethnic, cultural, socioeconomic backgrounds, ages, belief system, and gender. It destroys homes. It destroys marriages. It destroys careers, people's futures, and threatens the overall health and safety of those involved in addictive behaviors. Here are some statistics of the impact of uh, drug addiction um, both in the U.S. and around the world. And you can kind of uh, re uh, read more about that um, in the full course that we offer or just on this presentation, it's available to you um, at any time on our, uh, on this platform. Defining substance misuse. Drug and alcohol addiction is an epidemic in our global society. It is a societal problem that people, regardless of where they live or what they have, have experience themselves or know of someone who is an experience who has struggled with drug and alcohol addiction or substance misuse people must be aware of and concerned about addiction because it is a destructive force an enemy that has destroyed many lives via various forms of addictive behaviors and substances and when we talk about substance abuse we're referring to the misuse of both illicit drugs and prescription medications which are legal drugs uh, uh, these are drugs prescribed by your medical provider drugs such as adderall percocet morphine what is substance use disorder according to mental the mental health field behavioral health field is a primary chronic disease that affects a person's brain and behavior and leads to an inability to control the use of a legal or illegal drug. This lack of control can cause severe and long lasting damage to the person's overall health and every other area of their life. Some drugs such as opiate painkillers are more likely to become addictive and cause addiction more quickly than others. What are some reasons why people abuse substances? Well, I mean, people, why do people do this? People often start misusing drugs for various reasons, and that includes to feel better, to feel good, to the feeling of high, just having that pleasurable feeling, just, you know, don't want to have any care in the world. Another reason is to feel better, to relieve stress, making themselves numb, forgetting all their problems, all the problems of the world that they have, the life challenges they're facing. They take drugs to make them feel better, to do better. Some drugs en enhance performance, ex for example, steroids. A lot of athletes use steroids, steroids, even though it's illegal to use it, and there, there are consequences for that athlete that uses it um, uh, when they find out. Um, it also helps a person to do better in their exam. Some people suffer from test anxiety, so they take drugs to make them do better, to make them be able to be calm enough to do better uh, than they typically would if they weren't taking the drugs. 
Another reason, which is a common one, is to relieve pain. Chronic pain is often managed through opioid uh, medications. So you have a lot of people struggling with uh, chronic pain, whether back pain from an accident uh, they had years before or, or, or something, or from back surgery they had and the pain never went away. So they start taking um, opioid medications. Some suffer from uh, fibromyalgia, some suffer from osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, different types of um, uh, physical conditions, um, uh, medical conditions that require them to take uh, painkillers. Um, and of course, the, the typical Tylenol is, may not do the trick for them. Um, and these drugs, these opioid medications are highly uh, addictive. So education and close monitoring by their prescribers, by medical, by the by medical practitioners, by the individual's doctor or physician is extremely crucial. Another reason is peer pressure. So some people, um, especially our youths, they're doing it because they're, they've been forced to do so. According to them, they didn't have a choice, you know? Um, and some just out of simple, simple curiosity, just want to experiment. They want to do what other people are doing. Like, what's the big deal? So, um, here is listed a few substances often abused. Um, these are the most common ones, uh, alcohol, um, you have cannabis, hashish, um, also called uh, weed, marijuana pot, um, you have benzodiazepines, you have crack cocaine, uh, very common, easily found on the streets or gotten on the streets uh, for, for cheap, uh, fentanyl, heroin, magic mushrooms, uh, methamphetamines, uh, which is also called meth or crystal meth, another one easily found on the streets. Uh, prescription pain meds like oxycodone, uh, Percocet, um, then you have LSD, you have ecstasy, which is also called Molly. Now, before we look at the relationship between substance use disorder and mental health disorder, let's take a look, quick look at what mental health disorder is, beginning with what is mental health. So what is mental health? Mental health is a state of mental well-being that enables people to cope with the stresses of life, realize their abilities, learn well and work well, and contribute to their community. And now this is a definition by the World Health Organization, WHO. Another definition of mental health is by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Association called SAMHSA. And according to SAMHSA, mental health has to do with our emotional, social, and psychological well-being. And it's important that at every stage or phase of a person's life, it affects how we think, feel, and act, and helps determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and make choices. And so that's their definition. Now, what is mental health disorder? Mental health disorder or mental illness, as it's also called, is a disorder that can cause psychological and behavioral disturbances that can range from mild to severe. It affects a person's thinking, mood or behavior. Several factors contribute to mental health disorder and they include biological factors, biological factors such as genes or brain chemistry. Also life experiences. We all experience life uh, challenges at one point or the other um, over the course of our lives. And so you have people who have experienced trauma, whether the death of a, an, the sudden death of a, lo a loved one um, or, or abuse of any kind, whether physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, there's also um, another factor called family history of mental, for those um, who have mental health um, in their family, uh, ment uh, those who have had fa other family members um, that has struggled with mental health. So there's a history there um, as well. So, so, so um, some common mental health disorders include anxiety, depression, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, schizophrenia, uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder called ADHD. Uh, that's another common one and it's uh, often found in children. Now more detailed information on mental health and mental illness is discussed in the introduction to mental health coaching course that we also offer and it's a part of this certificate program. It's, it's a great course and I highly encourage you if you're really interested in this field um, in in ministering and serving in the mental health field, um, I will encourage you to, to consider taking this course. 
uh, the certificate uh, certificate course. There are four courses um, that will that if you com uh, uh, successfully complete, you will be able to earn a certificate in uh, fundamentals of mental health coaching. So I do want to encourage you to take that course. Um, and it's, uh, completely free, um, no cost to you at all. Just go on our student, uh, student portal and sign up for all four courses. Okay. Substance misuse or substance use disorder and mental health disorders. What is the connection? So often these two disorders coexist. Today, some 18.5 million Americans struggle with substance use disorder. An additional 46 million Americans suffer from one or more mental health disorders. And according to the American Addiction Centers, substance use disorders and mental health disorders or mental illness often occur simultaneously, as you can see in this picture here. They are stated to be synonymous terms used. Co-occurring, you'll hear them using co-occurring disorder and dual diagnosis to describe this very condition. And it's relatively common. So it's very common to see somebody who has a mental health disorder also having struggling with one uh, uh, to, with drug or alcohol addiction. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, NIDA, there are three main pathways that can contribute to the simultaneous presence between substance abuse and mental illness or mental health disorder. The first one is common risk factors, which can contribute to both um, uh, uh, diagnosis or disorders. And a uh, second, second pathway is mental illnesses may contribute to substance use and addiction. And that, the last pathway um, states substance use and addiction can contribute to the development of mental health uh, disorder. So these three pathways will be discussed for, uh, for, uh, further in the course, uh, the full course. Um, if you, so you will only, you'll be able to have access to the more information on these three main pathways that can contribute to simultaneous presence between substance abuse and mental illnesses when you sign up for the full course. Okay. Now let's go to what the Bible says about alcohol and drug addiction or substance use disorder. What does it say about it? There's really no place in scripture that the term alcohol and drug addiction or substance abuse is mentioned. And I'm sure you all know that there's nowhere listed, uh, that is mentioned. Um, however, there are several places in scripture where alcohol intoxication and defiling one's body is addressed. And you can jot down these uh, different scripture uh, verses um, if you're taking notes. Uh, so we have Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, where it says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. You have 1 Corinthians 6, 10. Uh, you have Proverbs 21. Wine is a marker, strong drink is raging, and what's, whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. You have Romans 13, 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 17. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, so it's just listed on there and you probably will may know more. Uh, if, if you spend time, um, when, if you want to spend time, uh, when you spend time studying this, uh, um, when you take this course or you want to spend time, uh, just knowing more about this, uh, alcohol and drug addiction, you can always go through scripture and pull out more verses, uh, more portions of scripture that, uh, talks about, um, uh, defiling your body, you know, and, and think of what you take in. And of course, hence alcohol, um, which is, uh, which is often mentioned in, uh, scripture. How can you support those struggling with alcohol and drug addiction or substance use or suffering with, from substance use disorder in your church or in a Christian environment? How can you support them? As lay counselors, um, biblical counselors, Christian counselors, whatever term you want to use, Christian addiction coaches and ministers, you can support these individuals in different ways. One-on-one -on -one therapy sessions, working alongside licensed 
therapists and Christian counselors. So there are, um, there are a number of, um, uh, Christian counselors or biblical counselors, coaches and ministers, um, in this profession, in the mental health profession or working in drug, uh, as drug and alcohol counselors that, um, work alongside of professionals, um, like psychologists, psychiatrists, mental health therapists, they work alongside of them or with them, um, to provide support and provide this help to the individual struggling with drug and alcohol addiction. Um, because you'll find an individual who is seen, a, a going to one-on-one -on -one sessions with a therapist, but is also seen a biblical counselor, a mental health coach on the side as well. So these two professionals do work together. Um, especially if it's a Christian, um, therapist, which we prefer you go to since we are believers. Um, another way to help is through faith-based 12 step programs that are offered in some churches, for example, celebrate recovery. Um, there are programs like that, that can help those struggling with, um, other programs like celebrate recovery that can also help the individual that is struggling with substance use. Uh, these programs provide paths out to, to uh, out of alcoholism and provides path a path into recovery. You know, so it's not just um, they're really very um, helpful programs, and a lot of people uh, who have passed through it or passing through it have really attested to its, uh, effectiveness in their lives. Even family members have attested to these 12 step programs that it has really worked for, for their loved ones. Um, group therapy sessions, uh, working alongside a professional Christian, uh, Christian counselor or therapist, um, is another one as well. So in addition to one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions, you can also have, um, um, uh, an individual can also benefit from group therapy sessions as well. Um, also, um, encouraging Christian teachings and sermons addressing addiction and hope of recovery. Um, this is another effective, um, uh, tool that is used, um, to help those who are struggling. Um, you want to make sure that, um, as their, as their coach, as a counselor to them, as a minister to them, you want to make sure that these individuals are fellowship, uh, are, are not, uh, neglecting or forsaking the assembly of the brethren. You want to make sure that they are going to a Bible believing church, a place where they're being fed spiritually, a place where they're really uh, hearing and receiving the word of God daily, uh, whether it's a Bible study group, whether it's a home fellowship group, whether it's a, their local assembly, they need to, to, to be, to re they need to have access to, to undiluted, uh, teachings, Bible teachings, undiluted messages, sermons that, um, address addiction and the hope of recovery and just, you know, uh, uh, addressing life in general, how to, to overcome certain situations that they're passing through in their lives that, that caused them to even go to drugs in the first place. So it's so important, especially as a believer, it is so important to make sure that these individuals are, um, attending service, attending some kind of service, some kind of, um, uh, fellowship, uh, pretty much, um, prayer, uh, and studying the God, uh, God's word, very, very important, very necessary. Um, you, we can't, there's nothing we can do without prayer. Prayer is so, is, is, is such a primary, it's mandatory. It's a, it's such a crucial part of our, of who we are, of our Christian faith, of our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, because this person, you want to always be, uh, make sure, ensure that your, uh, the, these individuals that you're coaching, that you're mentoring, that you're serving, that you're supporting are constantly studying the, the uh, in, uh, uh, praying, have a pr active prayer life and that they're also constantly studying and meditating on the word of God. When they study meditating on the word, whether with you or on their own, um, they're growing, 
you know, they're being fed spiritually. They're being the Holy Spirit is ministering to them um, as they receive, as they're, as they're studying the word of God and things they do not understand. They now come to you. They go to their pastor and, uh, and uh, the pastor through the Holy Spirit uh, will re- um, give them understanding, help them to understand the portion of scripture that, um, they're confused, uh, you know, they're confused about, or they can even pray as they're studying the word of God. They pray on their own, study the word of God so that the Holy spirit can bring revelation, can open their understanding to receive the word and give, and he will, the Holy spirit himself will give understanding to that individual of what they are studying, given, give revelation pretty much. Um, also, um, another way that a coach or a minister or a counselor can help the individual struggling with alcohol and drug addiction is to collaborate healthy uh, social support with family and friends. So it's very important as well to ensure that, um, that the family is part of the recovery process, because I know that a lot of bridges have been burnt, um, by the individual who has been, um, struggling with um, addiction uh they've probably lost friends probably lost family members but slowly and gradually you know it doesn't mean these people do not love them anymore uh, or, or love them any less but it's hard for them to to see them go through that because it, you know you see a lot of uh, individuals who have who are struggling with this addiction that they have stolen from loved ones they have hurt them so deeply. So they're also dealing with their own issues. They're they're being traumatized by their loved ones. They're they're probably going for counseling themselves or therapy themselves. Um, but it's important for the, 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 for you as a coach, uh, or, or counselor, um, to ensure that, um, at some point in time, the family comes together slowly, but gradually, it's not going to be, it's, it's not something that's going to happen overnight, but it's going to be a gradual process. That's going to be effective, effective through prayers. Um, and through you talking to one family member, maybe start with one family member at a time, um, to be able to, uh, reconnect them, to be able to reestablish, um, a relationship with, um, your coachee or, or your church member. Um, and, um, slowly, but gradually it will happen. And it's only by the power of the Holy spirit that these family, these, um, social supports can be restored, reconnected so that this individual bec- will be highly motivated to continue to move forward, knowing that he has a strong family base, a strong, uh, healthy social support around him. Um, that, uh, 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 ch- chair lead leading him on chair leading him or cheering him on um to to do better and so um that is, that's another way that you can be of help to somebody struggling with alcohol and drug addiction now um many careers exist in the field of substance abuse treatment or drug and alcohol addiction treatment and recovery it is a reward it's it's a rewarding career um it's many people, there are several Christians, several believers who have chosen this profession of healthcare to, uh, specialize in, um, your level of education and experience determines what type of roles that you will get or work in. So if you decide even as a believer that you want to cho- choose this as a professional route, it's wonderful. It, it's great, but you just know that you're going to require some, um, advanced education, to prop most likely to be able to work in this field so that, because in order to work in this field, you have to be licensed by your state and especially for those in the, in the United States. Um, but if you want to take it on as a, a voc- as a ministry vocation, then you would not require as much, um, training as those who are, uh, who decide to work in the circular arena. Um, but either way, boats, professional, whatever profession, uh, whatever route you choose, you are still as a believer, you are still going to be blessing and impacting lives. Um, now, uh, let's see. So some common professions, um, with, you know, that require education, you know, or 
advanced education involve social workers, for example. So the minimum requirement for a social worker is a bachelor's degree in social work, in counseling, in human services. Um, so they, to be a social worker, that's the minimum requirement. You have to have a bachelor's degree. Now, for those who want to advance further and um, really be able to even do more, um, they have to have advanced degrees like a ma um, master's degree and, uh, you know, and a doctorate if they decide to go higher than that. Um, alcohol and drug counselors. So the minimum, requ minimum required uh, requirement for those ones um, are, is an associate degree, which is a two-year degree in counseling, um, in psychology, in nursing. If you uh, for when I say nursing, meaning that you 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 are already you become a registered nurse. Uh, uh, you get your ADN nursing, uh, become a registered nurse, and you'll be able to also work um, specialize in, um, maybe, uh, find yourself working in, uh, alcohol, uh, and, uh, as, um, in a, re in a rehabilitation, uh, facility, in a detox, medical detox facility. Uh, you can find yourself working as a nurse in those er in that field. Uh, I mean, in that, um, in that type of facility, or you can find yourself working as a, uh, alcohol and drug counselor. I believe you will have to get licensed as an alcohol and drug counselor in, re in addition to your license as a nurse, uh, to be able to, to identify as a counselor. Um, but either way, whether you're a counselor or not, the fact that you're a nurse and working in a rehabilitation a, a facility or working in a medical detox facility, um, or, in a psychiatric uh, hospital, you are already working in the field. Um, mental health therapist, addiction therapist, minimum requirement is a master's degree in counseling. Uh, so to be able to diagnose, to be able to treat and diagnose, um, you have to have a master's degree in counseling or social work or psychology. Um, another profession that doesn't really require uh, a degree um, but they prefer you do have one, um, it's an addiction and recovery coach. So minimum requirement is just intensive coach training, uh, become a certified coach and then, um, go through rigorous training, um, gets your certification, um, and you start helping people you start working in that field. So a even though a degree is preferred, it is not mandatory. It is not mandatory. So this is just a, a few of the professions that uh, are out there that you can consider, um, you know, uh, taking up um, in order to 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 effectively serve um, these individuals in your community. Um, another profession that um, or another yeah another position or profession as well. Um, uh, where you can also be of, of tremendous help to, uh, to those struggling with drug and alcohol addiction is a mental health coach. So a men in a, for a mental health coach, it's just like the addiction and recovery coach. Uh, minimum requirement is just intensive coach training, um, and getting, uh, certified. Um, a degree is, uh, it's not mandatory. It's preferred. They prefer you to have a degree, um, but it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory at all. Um, so uh, that's also another area that you can specialize in. Um, and um, you, if you can even look it up online as far as uh, information about becoming, uh, you know, enrolling in any of these programs um, and stuff. Okay, so substance abuse of any kind is, um, I just want to conclude, um, here that substance abuse, substance misuse, substance use disorder of any kind is unacceptable behavior for any follower of Jesus Christ. In some instances is referred to as a sin. Christians are called to live above reproach, being a moral and godly example to others. We're also mandated to obey the laws of the land, as it states in Matthew 22, uh, 21. And so the drugs, the substances mentioned um, earlier um, in slide eight are illegal and Christians engage in such activity. They're disobeying the laws of the land, thereby disobeying God's word as spoken in Romans 13, 
1 to 7 and 1 Peter 2, 13 to 17. Even if those substances are legal in some countries and allowed for recreational use, remember, as believers, we must protect the earthly body that we have been given because it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You do not want anything defiling your temple. And alcohol and illegal substances or, abuse, or even the abuse of legal substances will surely bring lasting damage to your body, to one's body and to one's overall health. For those in the body of Christ who are struggling with this disease, with this disorder, it is your role as counselors, as coaches, as ministers to offer them a way out by pointing them in the right direction. And at the end of the day, that direction is hope in Christ. Hope in Christ. No matter the tools we use, strategies we use, the, the direction that we need to point them to is hope hope in Christ Jesus using all that we we have been made available to us using the tools the strategies the resources the word of God which is number one which is huge you know to lead them in the right direction so I just want to thank you for joining us today I want to encourage you to, once again, to enroll in the certificate program. Once again, it's called uh, Fundamentals of Christian Mental Health Coaching. Um, and there are four courses, which includes this one, um, that are listed in uh, under that program. So the first course is the Christian Mental Health Coaching, CM CMHC 101. And then understanding substance use disorder, the basics, which is this course, SUD 100, the battle for the body, which is a wonderful, wonderful course. And finally, spiritual warfare or spiritual strategies for warfare. So these are the four courses, loaded courses, especially the battle for the body and the spiritual strategies for warfare. Those are loaded courses that you will definitely enjoy studying. So once again, thank you for joining us today and um, God bless you until next time.